Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, for the first speech, I'm going to be talking about Mars and space missions to Mars. I thought it would maybe be a bit, a uh, bit more in, uh, more of an interesting topic, and I thought it would perhaps help you to move away a bit from this dreary news of COVID. On Tuesday, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, sent a probe called Hope into Mars's orbit. Usually when space missions are sent to Mars, they only have a 50% chance of succeeding. So the UAE heralded this as a great triumph. The probe called HOPE arrived in Mars's orbit after seven months and after traveling 300, and mil 300 million miles. Similarly, China also sent uh, a probe into Mars's orbit after a six month journey. And uh, the leader of the mission said that this was only at the beginning and that actually China wanted to send a robot into Mars's orbit in a few months. There seems to be a bit of a bottleneck here because America has also sent a robot called Perseverance into Mars's orbit. And it is predicted that this robot will land on Mars on Thursday. What was the UAE's mission here? What was the UAE trying to achieve by all of this? Well, the basic aim of the mission was to send this probe, which would charter the changing atmosphere and the changing weather patterns on Mars. They wanted to charter the different weather patterns throughout the four seasons. And they also wanted to measure the levels of hydrogen and oxygen and then send back the data and imagery back to the central uh, space station. President Bush, interestingly, announced about a decade ago that America would be sending uh, a manned mission to Mars within the next decade interestingly enough. And as we know, Elon Musk wants to colonize Mars. So let's start by asking a few questions. Why have three probes been sent into Mars's orbit within just 10 days of each other? Well, this is actually isn't a coincidence because you can't actually send missions to Mars all year round. There's actually only a very small window of opportunity. And that window of opportunity is when the Earth rotates uh, near Mars. So when the Earth and the Mar Earth and Mars are both rotating uh, around the sun and that they are close to each other, that's when you can send missions to Mars. The rest of the time, the missions will fail. So every 26 months or so, you can send uh, around one probe uh, into Mars's orbit. Usually these probes or robots take around six months to get there because they have to travel 55 million kilometers. What about the US's mission? Well, they sent a robot and the aim of the robot was to gather samples and in so doing study the environment of Mars. They wanted to check whether basically the eventually they could send human exploration missions to Mars. They actually want to establish a manned base on uh, Mars, which is very ambitious, of course. Let's look at the geopolitical aspects. Well, on the one hand, there seems to be quite a lot of cooperation. Surprisingly enough, the West cooperates quite a lot with Russia in this domain. Uh, Russia obviously is part of the International Space Station, and there's a lot of cooperation between the Europeans, Americans and Russians. Unsurprisingly, however, the Americans do not cooperate with the Chinese in this domain. Some have actually started to say that this is actually heralding a new space race. Of course, there was a space race between the USSR and the USA during the Cold War. And some have actually started to draw parallels between the recent news about the USA and China sending in probes into Mars's orbit and the former space race between the USA and the USSR. So this doesn't seem to be a coincidence. What about Europe? What's Europe doing? Well, Europe has sent two satellites into Mars. And actually in 2022, there will be a project called ExoMars, uh, which will send probes into Mars's orbit. And the idea, again, is to gather samples and analyze the environment in, uh, in Mars. 
But let's have a brief look back at the UAE. So the UAE's spacecraft arrived in Mars's orbit before the Chinese or the US's mission. Of course, as we as I was saying beforehand, some are saying that this is a new space race, a new uh, desire on the part of certain countries to gain dominance in this field. As we know, the UAE is very uh, active in international policy. For example, they have been involved in conflicts in Yemen, uh, Libya and Syria. They've intervened in all three of these countries. And uh, the UAE's mission to Mars has actually been seen as a sort of interplanetary extension of this state's desire to punch above its weight. In 2023, the UAE will actually launch a new satellite and put it into uh, Mars's orbit. In addition, the UAE's mission is actually a civilian mission, at least on the face of it, the UAE claims that this mission is civilian and not military. Having said that, China wants to build a new moon base and a base on Mars. They want to build their own space station in Mars. So although the space realm does not seem to be militarized at the moment, there are question marks over this because it is possible that the this um, desire to send missions to Mars will actually become a military tool or a military tactic. Space is actually seen as a new frontier for military action. Indeed, countries are setting up so-called space force units within their armed forces. And recently, the US and UK have actually accused Russia of firing anti-satellite weapons. But finally, the UAE had one other aim in sending this probe into Mars's orbit. The aim was to stimulate growth. Why would it do this by sending uh, a probe into Mars's orbit? Well, the aim was to inspire people, inspire young people to develop their skills and capacities. The idea was to inspire them to study science and engineering and to also foster more science communication with the general public. So that's my conclusion. Um, it was more of a superficial look at the situation. Hopefully we can dig into it a little deeper in the second part. Thank you.